Joining us now, a head coach that dealt with a little bit of a rough start and has since helped her team turn things around, including a season I four goal performance against St. Mary's on Friday night. I love personally to destroy St. Mary's, coach. Okay. <laughs> My St. Mary's face has been well documented on this program. Four goals against the Gales. It feels like your team has turned the corner. Hey, we've been really trying hard to turn the corner for a while now, and uh, the girls have been just so resilient. It hasn't uh, been an easy season by any means, and you know we started off with a really challenging schedule and coming up with a new front line and a new midfield, and uh, but we still had high expectations, and you know you get you get knocked in the gut a few times, and the girls just come back every day to practice, ready to get better. You've won three of four. You've won four of the last six. Uh, what changed besides maybe the schedule a little bit? Because you you always play a very challenging schedule, and the first part of the schedule was especially challenging. Yeah, it was. You know, we've. Um, I think a lot of it is just spending a lot of time on our attack. You know, we graduated obviously some very talented players and um, some kids who didn't have a lot of experience. You know, kind of being the go-to person and trying to create that and trying to feel a little bit more comfortable in the goal and and uh, we've we've had some different players play in our midfield as well. So um, I think just spending a lot of time in front of the goal, building the girls' confidence, encouraging them to shoot, encouraging them to combine, and um, I think you know you could tell definitely in our game. You can tell every day at training that we've made a lot of progress in the last three weeks. This team was obviously searching for an identity, and that the conversation we're having right now uh, is evidence of that. But it, it seems like you have established that. So how would you describe the identity of this team right now? Um, you know, I think they're just fighters. And just uh, we talk about the warrior mentality and uh, just going up. And even when things are against you, you just got to go out there and be your very best. And I think things are coming together. I think through the hard times, these girls have really drawn close together. They're a very close team. Uh, we have tremendous leadership uh, on this team as well as some very experienced players. We've got nine seniors. Um, a lot of those have really stepped up. You know, Taylor, uh, Steph, and Hannah, particularly on our offense now, Maddie Matthews, as you see her scoring goals, um, Nadia as well as Avery, who is, you know, playing a whole new position this year and doing a really great job for us. Maddie, uh, what does she mean to this team right now? Because she has four goals to assist in the last six games, in which you guys have gone four and two. Yeah, you know, Maddie, as, as we've mentioned, every day in practice, she's getting more and more comfortable in front of the goal. You know, I, we challenged her a few weeks ago just to be a more physical player. She's such a tremendous athlete. She has great strength, size, and, and speed. She's a lot faster than people realize. And um, just really challenged her to be more of a presence on the field, to, to really mix it up, get her shot off. She's got a great shot. And, um, you know, really proud of the way she put that 1v1. Those are not easy. They look easy, um, but unless you're out there, those are not easy goals to put away. And that was a big goal for us and in, in building our confidence against a great team who's, who's had some good success already in conference play. What role has Mitch Matthews played in the turnaround of BYU <laughs> Hey, he wrote the bus up to uh, with us to the airport where yeah. he was going somewhere. So he needed see, a free ride. You yeah, guys were nice. yeah, he's a little missing in action, but I'm sure he's encouraging Maddie uh, through the <laughs> phone. But uh, she's doing great. So this way she's focused because he's not around. He's kind of off doing his thing, and she's doing hers. And and hopefully they they both do great that, great things. That athlete life is hard sometimes. <laughs> when the two are athletes, they just never see each other. Yeah. The head coach of BYU women's soccer, Jen Rockwood, with us uh, in Studio B on BYU Sports Nation. The West Coast Conference is kind of wide open this year. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of unexpected things are happening, a lot of parity. Mm -hmm. Why do you like BYU's chances to repeat, uh, given everything that has happened this season for you and for what's going on with the rest of the conference? Um, because I really like where we are right now. Um, I've always felt, even a few weeks ago, I felt like we still had a great chance of winning the WCC again. You know, it's something that is always a, a goal of ours as we start the season. Uh, we got five of them in a row right now going for number six. And so um, these girls want it really bad and and it's always competitive every game I think uh, I think teams have won it the last six seven years with just one loss I mean, it comes down to a couple points you know three points for a win one for a tie and it comes down to one or two points and we've got Pepperdine who's had a great season so far you know St. Mary I mean uh, San Diego did have a great non-conference season but they're three and oh in conference right now so you know who knows what can happen but uh, I love the way we're playing right now I think the girls are hungry and we should be playing with a lot of confidence Traditionally, in most of the sports, in men's basketball, women's basketball, kind of broke out of this a few years ago, but uh, you're playing Thursday in Provo, and then you're playing Saturday in San Francisco. Do you like the split ro home road week? 
Um, I don't know that it's ideal, but it's something our conference has gone to, um, just trying to give us an extra week. You know, soccer's tough when you play two games a weekend. Um, and trying to get some single games, the conference has done that. And so, you know, St. Mary's had to do it this last weekend. They were um, playing on the road Thursday and then had to fly here. So, you know, um, I, like, I like that we're playing home first. You know, San Francisco's always a tough place to play. Um, but we've played well there, and, and we're playing better and better at home. So I really like our chances this weekend. For BYU moving forward, what do you say or what do you think is the biggest thing you need to shore up if it, it is that this team is going to go on and win a West Coast Conference championship? Um, I just think we need to keep playing the way that uh, BYU soccer has always played, a very aggressive, high-pressure, and uh, attacking um, style. And um, like I said, we've been working on our attack straight, really, for three weeks a month in front of the goal, and we'll continue to do that. And sometimes the best defense is a, a great offense, having the ball all the time, making your opponents extremely uncomfortable, trying to score early. Uh, we know that if we can score two goals in every game, we've got a great chance of winning. You made a change at uh, keeper going with Sabrina Macias against St. Mary's in, in her first start. Uh, is that something that's going to stick moving forward? You know, that's something that we'll just take kind of a game at a time. Um, to be honest, Hannah's done a great job for us this year. She really has. We have an amazing goalkeeper crew. We've got five keepers that are training like crazy each and every day, and we've seen so much improvement from all of them. Sabrina's been training fantastic so far this year, and, um, you know, after St. Mary's, we put her in in the second half and just felt that she deserved a chance to kind of go out there and compete and thought she did a great job uh, on Saturday night against St. Mary's, and so it'll be a battle. We haven't made any decisions, and, and nothing's final, but, you know, we'll, we'll discuss that this week and see where it goes we always have fun with nadia's last name how do you say it <laughs> i just call her nadia <laughs> <laughs> nadia shoot the ball nadia get the ball find it nadia win the ball uh it's gomes uh, and I, I you know I, I don't have any spanish or portuguese experience and yeah. other people who do can can say it uh, yeah. better than I, but I just call her Nadia. Yeah, see, That's Greg, Greg Rebell, Greg he, Rebell he, spent time Greg, in Brazil. Yeah, so he, he knows. In Brazil, so did he I. knows, so yes. So gomsh, but yes. I like saying gomsh. There you go. Just like throwing a few <laughs> extra yeah. little whatever's in there. That's what you got to do in soccer. One for extra every goal and assist. And I say, Nadia win the ball. Yes. <laughs> Nadia, 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 go get the ball. I'll stick with Nadia, gomsh. shoot the ball. I did not live in uh, Portugal or Brazil, so I will say gomsh. <laughs> so you have no credibility. <laughs> We just want to say her name a lot. Yes. She is a That's fantastic a player, point. so talented, and uh, okay. love to watch her play. I want to throw in a plug for uh, Greg's Behind the Mic podcast. If you missed it with Jen, when were you on? A few weeks ago, right? Three yeah, at the beginning ago. of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was fun. It was uh, unexpected. I didn't know he was going to be talking about me. I thought he was going to be talking about the team and the program. But, you know, Greg's such a great guy, and he, he knows so much stuff. And he just throws stats at us all the time. So yes. it's, it's pretty yeah. fun. But, yeah, yeah that was, that was a, a cool experience, and I appreciate the opportunity we have to work with him and him to travel with us and call our game and give a, our, our program a lot of exposure. A proud BYU Cougar, but also a proud Rick's Viking. Yes. Don't forget it. Yes. Yes, also, one year I, basketball. I, yeah. Yes, and I'm the child of two Rick's Vikings, so there you go. Oh, very good. Yeah. I didn't know that. How did I not know that? Neither of which graduated from college. Wow. And the Oregon Look connection. You're, not, the Oregon, you're, wearing, you're, you're wearing the duck color right now. I went to a Beavers game over the weekend. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, kind of balance it out. Okay. Okay. Rough weekend for both Oregon teams. <laughs> yes, Good grief. Jen, thanks for the time. Let's give you some karma for uh, okay, the approaching uh, West Coast yeah. Conference Pacific. matches. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it.